Hi guys! Welcome! In the first episode of the Doram Guide series, we've discussed the Doram Range physical build which uses Pikapek, Lunatic Carrot Pound, Lunatic Gunner, and Savage Soul for farming. Now that we are in the second episode of the series, we'll be focusing on the magic type build for farming, which uses the Kiwi Stock Gun and Catnip Meteor from the Doram Skill Tree, Corn Gatling from the Aesir Runes, and the Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment from Advanced Runes. We'll discuss in detail my recommended skills, stats, runes, equipment cards, and farming tips. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding on how to efficiently grind using the Magic Attack Doram build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's take a look at the recommended skills to get. When starting out as a Doram Warlock, you'll be using Auto Attack for farming. Thus, the only important skills to get are as follows. Level 10 Soul Bead, which is an active buff that increases your max HP and max SP for 30 minutes. This needs to be maxed out as a prerequisite to Soul Strike. Then max out Soul Strike to level 10 since this passive skill increases your attack and casting range. It also lets you deal additional true damage when using any damaging skills. After that, get level 3 Stealth and level 5 Stoop to unlock level 5 Jump, which is very handy when exploring maps or doing quests. However, its animation when landing is quite slow. A tip for this is to click on your mount to cancel the animation. As for the remaining skill points, allocation will be up to you. You may opt to max out Stoop to level 10 and Stealth to level 5. Once you've changed to the Spiritualist second job, you may get the following skills. First, we have level 10 Kiwi Stock Gun, which is a single target, earth element, magic damage skill. This is a good farming skill when starting out as a magic type Doram, since it only has a 1 second cooldown and a 1 second cast delay at max skill level. In addition, it has no fixed cast time while the variable cast time is just 3.5 seconds. The only downside of this skill is that it is only strong against wind element monsters, but is weak against earth and fire elements. Take note that Kiwi Stock Gun also has a chance to trigger critical hit, but has quite different mechanics from the normal crits of ADL Rangers and Rune Knights. This is because the critical hit of Doram only deals 1.5 times damage instead of 2 times. It also does not ignore the magic defense of targets. And also the critical chance is affected by Aji instead of luck. Next, get level 3 Fresh Shrimp to unlock Shrimp Swamp. And then max out Shrimp Swamp to level 10. This is an active buff that increases your attack and magic attack by 60 for 2 minutes and thereby improves your magic damage. Next, get level 1 Kiwi Rootstock Twining as a prerequisite to Catnip Meteor. And then max out Catnip Meteor to level 10. Catnip Meteor is an AoE skill that deals neutral magic damage to enemies while inflicting a curse effect. In the early game, Catnip Meteor is still unusable as a farming skill since its cast delay, cooldown, and variable cast time are longer compared to that of Kiwi Stock Gun. In addition, its damage multiplier is quite low. Thus, you need to invest in gears that reduce variable cast time and increase its damage multiplier before you can farm efficiently with Catnip Meteor. You might also need to achieve job breakthrough and invest in your runes to further enhance its skill damage. Only use this skill for farming when you can already insta-cast it and be able to kill mobs with 1-2 to two hits. After that, get level 5 Tuna Stake which lets you restore an ally's HP. You may use this skill to heal yourself if you have the Fresh Tuna Class S rune with the third line activated. And lastly, a lot the remaining point on any skill of your choice. Once you've changed to the Summoner Transcendent job, you may get Level 5 Cat Mint Powder as a prerequisite to Earth Power. Then max out Earth Power to level 10, since this passive skill will significantly help in achieving higher magic damage by boosting your int by 10 and magic attack by 10%. Next, get level 5 Meow Meow, which is an active buff that increases your magic damage by 15% for 20 seconds. Then get level 1 Night Vision in order to unlock the passive skill Cat Sight. And then max out Cat Sight to level 5 for plus 10% Ignore and Death. And lastly, allot your remaining points on the following support skills. Level 5 Tuna Party and level 9 Oceanic Power. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you may allocate additional skill points on the following. Level 20 Catnip Meteor for higher damage multiplier, but do take note that its cast delay, 
cooldown and variable cast time will also be longer. So again, I need to emphasize that you'll need to invest in suitable gears that reduce variable cast time before you can farm efficiently with Catnip Meteor. After that, get level 20 Earth Power which gives plus 20 int and plus 20% magic attack. Next, max out Meow Meow to level 10, which grants a plus 15% movement speed buff. Then max out Oceanic Power to level 10 and get level 1 Groom. As for the remaining 3 points, feel free to allot it anywhere you like. Once you've changed to the third job Animus, you may get level 5 Meow and level 3 Meow Grass to unlock the passive skill Earth Soul. Then prioritize maxing out Earth Soul to level 20 to further enhance the damage of Cat Dip Meteor by 30%. This skill also boosts the effect of the other fruit and vegetable skills such as the attack and magic attack reduction of Cat Mint Powder and the damage of Kiwi Stock Gun and Kiwi Root Stock Twining. Then get level 1 Rumble to unlock Tasty Shrimp Party. Next, max out Tasty Shrimp Party to level 10. This skill lets you cast Fresh Shrimp and Shrimp Swamp while also increasing your SP regen by 10%. With this buff, you can efficiently farm without worrying about your SP getting depleted. And then max out Ocean Soul to level 20 to improve the effects of Seafood skills. You will need this to increase the magic attack given by Shrimp Swamp. Lastly, allow the remaining 20 points from job level 61 to 80 and force focus for higher HP. Now that we understand the core skills for the Magic Dorem build, let's discuss the recommended stat distribution. For early game farming using Kiwi Stock Gun, you need to put points on decks first. Then test how much decks you need to insta-cast Kiwi Stock Gun. The amount of decks you'll allot will depend on your variable cast time reduction gears and your runes. After that, put points on int to increase your magic attack. And lastly, put the rest of your stat points on Agi. As mentioned earlier, the critical rate of Kiwi Stock Gun increases based on your total Agi, and you need to have high crit rate to ensure that you one-hit kill the monsters. You don't need to put points on Lux since it has no effect on the crit chance of Kiwi Stock Gun. However, for endgame farming with Catnip Meteor, you'll need to reset your stats. This is because Catnip Meteor has high variable cast time, and you'll need to adjust your dex values. Again, the amount of decks you'll allot will depend on your variable cast time reduction gears and your runes. After that, max out both Int and Agi to ensure that you have high damage. You still need to put points on Agi since you can still use Kiwi Stock Gun whenever Catnip Meteor is on cooldown. Lastly, if you have extra points, just put them on Vid for survivability. Next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. First, for farming with Kiwi Stock Gun, the Tier 1 and 2 Acer Monument runes you should activate are as follows. First up, we have 4 Kiwi Stock Gun effect runes which boost the damage of Kiwi Stock Gun by a total of 28%. Then get the 5 Soul Strike Penetration runes which increases the true damage dealt by Soul Strike by 50%. If you have high attack and magic attack stats, you'll definitely benefit from this. Next, activate the 4 Shrimp Swamp attack runes which increases Shrimp Swamp's attack and magic attack by 20 points. Thus, it will now give plus 80 attack and magic attack. After that, proceed to the 2 Earth Damage runes for plus 3% Earth Damage since Kiwi Stock Gun is a Force Earth Element skill. Then, get the 5 Int runes for more magic attack. Next, we have the free Ignore M Death runes for a total of plus 5% Ignore M Death. And lastly, we have the 5 Corn Gatling runes which lets you summon one immobile unit that attacks enemies automatically. This is like the Magic Dorm version of the creator's Hell Plant skill. The damage inflicted by Corn Gatling is 40% of your Kiwi Stock Gun damage. Thus, similar with Kiwi Stock Gun, Corn Gatling deals Earth damage and has a chance to deal critical hit. This is a very useful secondary farming skill to be able to kill more monsters. Once you've become an Animus and unlocked the Tier 3 runes, you can activate the following additional runes. First, we have the 7 Catnip Meteor Effect runes which will increase the damage of Catnip Meteor by a total of 42%. Next, we have the 4 Catnip Meteor Quick Cast runes which increases the variable cast time of Catnip Meteor by 2 seconds. Thus, level 20 Catnip Meteor will just have a 7 second cast time. After that, get all 7 neutral damage runes each of which increases neutral damage by 
then get all the 6 remaining int runes which give a total of plus 7 int, and 3 remaining ignore mdef runes for a total of plus 3% ignore mdef. If you have difficulty in sustaining SP when farming with Catnip Meteor, then I suggest getting the 5 Catnip Meteor Proficiency Runes which reduce the SP cost of Catnip Meteor by a total of 30% and 3 Tasty Shrimp Party SP Region Runes which increases SP Region by a total of 30%. As for your remaining contribution points, it is very important to allocate them on nearby Magic Attack nodes. Next, let's discuss the notable advanced runes. When farming with Kiwi Stock Gun and Corn Gatling only, you need to get the Crazy Tree Rune, which is a Class B advanced rune that increases the damage of Kiwi Stock Gun by 1 to 20% and reduces its SP cost by 1 to 20%. This will also affect the damage of Corn Gatling. However, if you'll be using Catnip Meteor for farming, then here are the additional advanced runes you need to get. First is the Meteor Strike Class B Rune which reduces the cast delay of Catnip Meteor by 0.1 to 1 second. Normally, Catnip Meteor has a cast delay of 2.5 seconds, so reducing it means it will be faster to cast another skill after you've casted Catnip Meteor. Another effect of this rune is a reduction in cooldown by 0.1 to 1.5 seconds. Normally, Catnip Meteor has a cooldown of 5 seconds, so reducing it means you'll be able to cast another Catnip Meteor at a faster rate. Another advanced rune that you must obtain is the Meow Hunter rune. This is a class S rune which gives a 30 to 100% chance to refresh all skill cooldowns when killing a monster every 3 seconds. Having a higher percentage chance will greatly improve your farming efficiency as Catnip Meteor has a very long cooldown. Another advanced rune that can be used by magic type Dorams is a Flying Frisbee rune. This grants the use of Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment a skill which summons a cat UFO and then bombards nearby enemies. Each bombing deals 30 to 80% of your catnip meteor damage and can even inflict curse effect if the second line is activated. Only one can exist at a time but you can summon two if the third line is activated. Do take note that casting this skill requires one blue gem. In my opinion, you can only use this skill efficiently for farming if the damage percent is high or if you manage to get the third line. Finally, for the attribute runes, these are my suggestions. For attack runes, prioritize upgrading the incantation, illusion, exorcism, element, and poisonous shadow attack rune. Then for the buff runes, level up your int, agi, and size buff runes. You may also get the dex and chant buff runes if you're having trouble in insta-casting catnip meteor. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, we should equip items and cards that increase the following stats to increase our damage output. M-Pen, Ignore M-Def, Magic Damage, Agi, Int, and Magic Attack. It is also essential to get items that increase dex and reduce cast time for faster chanting of spells. Also take note that luck and crit damage percentage won't affect the crit chance and damage of Dorm skills. For weapon, the most suitable option is the Advanced Fox Grass as it grants magic attack, and a neutral damage. You can craft this from the Rosanna Equipment Craftsman NPC using the following materials. Then upgrade it to Magical Fox Grass as it increases the damage of Catnip Meteor by 2% for each refined level. Thus, a high refined Magical Fox Grass is recommended to boost the damage of Catnip Meteor. This is also good for Kiwi Stock Gun farming since it increases Earth damage by 10% at Tier 4. As for the endgame, you will need to synthesize the magical yellow fox grass, which gives a significant boost in stats, especially at plus 12 or plus 15. It also has a set effect with the talisman grass necklace, which further increases your catnip meteor damage. An alternative to fox grass is a wizardry staff or its synthesis wizard's power. You can stick to your good old wizardry staff, especially if you're coming from the warlock class. However, if you're really going to focus on a Dorm class, then I suggest getting the Fox Grass for higher Catnip Meteor damage modifier. As for enchantment, you should aim for the Magic 4th enchant for variable cast time reduction. And then for weapon cards, it will depend on the monster you are farming. Keep in mind that only raised cards affect magic damage. As an example, you may use the Peko Peko Egg card when grinding Devil's Eye and Red Devil's Eye which are a formless race or the Goblin card when farming Rowan which is of Brute Race.
For the offhand, the best option is to use a sacrifice book for plus 30% ignore and death. Ideally, it should be refined to plus 10 and upgraded to tier 8 for additional magic attack. As for enchantment, you should aim for the inside 4th enchant which grants ignore and death. As for the offhand card, you may place the Gemini's Love card for plus 3% ignore and death and plus 5 magic attack. Next, for the armor, you may use a Doram exclusive armor, Elegant Doram Mantu as a beginner, which gives int, dex, and magic attack. Then just upgrade it to Elegant Doram Suit in the mid game. A plus 10 or plus 15 Elegant Doram Suit is preferred for a huge increase in percent magic attack. And for the end game, you need to synthesize the Lazy Meow Cat, preferably with a plus 10 or higher refinement level. This would give a significant amount of int, dex, variable cast time reduction, percent magic attack, and percent magic damage. Another armor suitable for beginners is a tier 3 mage coat, but don't upgrade it to robe of cast as it can't be equipped by Doram. As for enchantment, you should aim for the magic 4th enchant for variable cast time reduction. As for armor cards, you should place either a Munak Star card for plus 15 ignore M def, or an Agaf card for plus 5% magic attack. Choosing between the two will depend on your overall ignore M def stat. If you already have more than 130% ignore M def, then it might be better to use the Agaf card for farming. Next, for garment, the best in slot is a Nato Kicks Mantu simply because it is the only garment that grants int. Upgrading to tier 4 and refining to plus 12 will give a substantial amount of int, variable cast and reduction, ignore M def, and magic attack. Then you should aim for Arcane 4th Enchant for higher magic damage. As for Garment card, you can inlay the Celebration Collection card for plus 3 on all attributes if you're just starting out. Another decent Garment card is the Harpy Star card, since it gives a significant boost in magic attack. It can grant plus 5% magic attack if you have a total of 300 points of int. However, the most suitable for the Magic Doran build is the Ragic Star card, since it grants plus 8% neutral damage, which boosts your catnip meteor damage. For foot gear, you may choose any of the following. First is the crystal pumps, which give a huge boost in int and magic attack, especially when upgraded to max tier and refined to plus 12. You may use this if you're coming from the mage class. Another option is the rune boots, which is good if you're coming from a physical job class. At max tier and plus 12 refinement, it gives plus 5 int and plus 7% magic attack. However, Rune Boots is quite expensive to slot. As for the last option, we have the Elegant Doram Shoes, which is a Doram exclusive foot gear, which is crafted from the Rosanna Equipment Craftsman NPC. At max tier and plus 12 refinement, it can increase magic damage by 4% and int and dex by 5 points each. This is great for beginners as well due to the SP region. Due to its cheaper cost compared to Crystal Pumps and Rune Boots, it will be much easier to obtain a plus 12 slotted elegant Doram shoes. As for enchantment, you should aim for arcane 4th enchantment for higher magic damage. And then for foot gear cards, the current best in slot is a familiar star card for significant boost in magic attack. Cheaper alternatives for beginners are Black Witch Star card or Ingira card. For accessories, the most suitable option is a Talisman Grass Necklace due to the plus 5% neutral damage, plus 2 int, and plus 2 dex it grants. Upgrading to max tier and refining to plus 12 will further boost your magic attack, int, and dex. At tier 4, it will increase the Catnip Meteor skill damage multiplier by 7% for every plus 1 refinement, which can be stacked so you may equip 2 of these for higher Catnip Meteor damage. Lastly, it has a set effect with the Magical Fox Grass weapon, which further increases Catnip Meteor damage by 15%. However, this effect does not stack. Synthesizing it into the 4-leaf clover necklace will give a huge boost in stats and thus it is the current best in slot for magic type Doram. Notably, it gives plus 3% neutral damage at plus 8 refinement, and plus 5% magic attack and plus 25% catnip meteor skill multiplier at plus 15 refinement, which can be stacked. If you're coming from other magic drop classes, you can still use the standard magic accessories such as Orleans Gloves, Eye of the Lahan, Orleans Necklace, and Pocket Watch. You will still deal decent Catnip Meteor damage with these accessories. As for enchantment, you should aim for the Anti-Mage 4th Enchant which gives magic penetration. As for accessory cards, you may inlay a Zipper Bear Star card for plus 3% magic attack, 
or any race damage modifiers depending on the mobs you're farming. An example is the Ultraman card for fighting against brute and demon monsters. Lastly for the headgears, there are a lot of headgears in the game right now with various effects and uses. Choosing which to equip should be based on your budget, both in Zenny and real money for gacha headwares. For the head, the gacha item Norma the Unicorn is currently the best in slot due to the plus 8% skill damage it deals. Other alternatives for headgears are Starlight Ship or Crown of Light for gacha items, and Quaff or Wagtail Crest for F2P items. For headwear cards, you may inlay the Seal Apocalypse card for plus 10% ignore and death. Depositing another one in your handbook gives additional 2% ignore and death. For the face, you may use the gacha item Tears of Heaven, which gives a total of plus 4 int and plus 12% ignore and death when refinement level is plus 6. Or Dancing Flame, which gives plus 5% and pen. Other options are Heartbeat or a Demon Eye Patch from Feast Gacha. For F2P players, you may use a higher fine monocle, elven ears, beast mask, or evil eye. For the mouth, you may use the following gacha items Starlight Lullaby, Voice of Ocean, or Night Sakura Infatuation. For F2P players, my suggestion is to use either the Angry Snarl for a viable cast time reduction or Abyss Whisper for more damage. For the back, my recommendations for gacha items are. Plus 6 Lost Star Track, Plus 6 Bright Light, Thunder Taiko, or Starlight Sweetie. As for F2P back items, you may use a Devil Wing or Baby Owl. And lastly, for the tail, I suggest using Wind Purse Drake, Plus 6 Flower Pistol, Emerald Assistant Orwell, or Golden March for gacha headwares. And for F2P, we have Beast Tail or Puerco Picha. But for more efficient farming, you can use Silver Bell instead due to the less 10% cast delay and less 10% SP cost. As for headwear enchantment, you should aim for inside 4th enchant on the face and back item and arcane 4th enchant on your tail item. Up next, let's take a look at the possible pets to accompany you in battle. There are tons of pets to choose from but here are my recommendations. The best pet to bring in battle for higher damage is either the 3 star pet Moonlight Flower or the event pet Red Nose Rudolph as they both give plus 2% M pen. There are also other event pets which are good for magic Doram such as White Dog for plus 5% ignore M death, Dancing Dragon for plus 3% damage to all monsters and plus 5 int, or Skewer for plus 5 int and plus 5 dex. But if you haven't obtained these pets from events, then you may use Martin Scavenger for plus 10 int, Mechanical Hound for plus 60 magic attack, Medusa for plus 50 magic attack, Harpy for plus 40 magic attack, Sohi for plus 40 magic attack and plus 10% SP region, or Isis for 5% variable cast time reduction. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when setting up your farming. First, for your auto skill slot setup, put in your self buffs Shrimp Swamp and Meow Meow. If you already have the anime skill Tasty Shrimp Party, then just replace Shrimp Swamp with Tasty Shrimp Party. Next, put in the damaging skills you will use. Kiwi Stock Gun, Corn Gatling, Catnip Meteor, and Cat Flying Saucer Bombardment. Make sure to select the monster you want to farm so that Corn Gatling will be placed near the mobs you're farming. Because if you select all monsters, it will be placed on the spot where you're standing. At early levels, SP sustainability might be a problem. Aside from having SP region gears, you may combat SP problems by doing the following. First, cook and eat batches of 999 one-star foods for SP discharge. Second, use up warm and hot meals from the food shop NPC. And third, place play dead in your auto skill slot. Next, to boost damage, you may eat cooked foods that increase magic attack and MPEN like the original will juice. In addition, we could also consume int and agi meals. Another way to boost damage is through our guild blessing and praying cards. For a guild blessing, max out wise blessings to 150. As for praying cards, prioritize M pen, ignore M def, and magic attack for attack cards, then earth damage for element cards. If you can already one hit the mobs without the need to eat cooked foods, then I suggest to consume foods that reduce cast delays such as the original will salad. 
15% reduction in cast delay will help boost your farming efficiency as you can cast kills more often. Another way to reduce cast delay is to use the Silver Bell Tail item, which I've mentioned earlier. Use items that increase job EXP for faster leveling up. Make sure your Meteoric Chain or Chain Lightning are active before you start farming. You may also opt to consume Pouring Growth Panacea which can be bought from the Tour Assistant. There are also equipment and headwear that boost EXP gains such as Light Saint Set from the Fancy Generator 2 machine, the Ned Hog's Poison Fang, Night Ira, Sanders Legacy, and Blue Isut Sea from the Fancy Generator 1 machine. Only use these items if you can still one-hit the monsters you are farming. When starting out as a Dora Morlock, you can use Auto Attack to farm Squirrel and Robio Forest. They drop the Creamy Hazelnut item which is quite in demand as they are needed for crafting Doram gears. The optimal level to farm here is until level 23, but some still stay here until level 33 due to the high Zenny income from selling Creamy Hazelnut. However, if you are prioritizing EXP, then you may go to Dragon Island and farm Sea Otter and Beach Conch as they give higher EXP. You may stay here until you can change jobs to Spiritualist. As a Spiritualist, your main farming skill is Kiwi Stock Gun. Since it is Force Element skill, it will be easier to achieve one-hit kill when farming Wind Element monsters such as Steam Goblin and Goblin Forest ideally from level 40 to 50, Hornet and Menblood in Molnir Mountains, ideally from level 40 to 55, and Dustiness in Prindera Northgate, ideally from level 52 to 70 since it gives huge EXP. Once you've changed the summoner and have your basic gears for catnip meteor farming, you can farm these monsters in the following maps. Hobolt in Court Forest, ideally from level 70 to 95, Anolian Sting and Injustice in Glassheim Colford, ideally from level 85 to 100. If you have high cat UFO damage rune, then you may also use it for farming. Just take note that the cat flying saucer bombardment skill costs 1 blue gemstone each, so consider that when assessing your farming income. However, if you still can't kill the mobs with one casting of catnip meteor, then you can return to kiwi stock gun farming and kill these wind element monsters instead. Sky Petite in Glassheim Outskirt, ideally from level 70 to 88. Punk in Clock Tower First Floor, ideally from level 88 to 108. And Stem Worm in Clock Tower Basement 1, ideally from level 97 to 117. Once you've changed to Animus, you can farm Harpy in the border checkpoint using a combination of Catnip Meteor, Kiwi Stock Gun, and Corn Gatling. You may also use Cat Flying Saucer here if it can deal high damage. This will yield high Zenny income but competition is tough in this area because of genetics. You can stay here from level 109 to 129. Once you've reached base level 130, the Zenny income from Harpy Farming will get lower. So my suggestion for leveling up to 140 is to go to the Rachel Underground Sanctuary and farm Devil's Eye and Red Devil's Eye using Kiwi Stock Gun. You may also use AoE farming here but I find it more efficient to just spam Kiwi Stock Gun. There is also danger that Corrupted Bishop Shibam might spawn near you due to the small map size. And for my last and final tip, you need to invest in your Magic Attack Unlock and Deposit Rewards in the Adventure Handbook to boost your damage. You may also get more Int, Agi, and Dex by doing the following. First is by doing multi-job and leveling up to the following job classes. However, you'll need to spend real money for this. Second is by getting headwear deposit rewards from Pisces, Gemini, and Leo Diadem. And third and last is by depositing these cards. Investing in these stats will definitely help in enhancing your damage output. Alright, so far we've discussed the most recommended skills, stats, runes, equipment, cards, pets, and farming tips for the magic type Doram farming build. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your character. In our next video, we'll discuss how to set up your ranged physical Doram character for boss hunting and clearing instances. Feel free to comment down below if you have suggestions on what you want to see next. Alright, that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. 
I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.